Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. job, and it makes a man watchful, and a little lonely. Oh, yes. Land sakes, the hours the bank makes that poor boy work is a caution. He wouldn't hardly ever get no warm food if I didn't pack it down to him. How have you been, Marshal? Oh, fine, Miss Gross, just fine. That's good. Well, no, you gents have got things to do. Mighty nice to pass the word with you. Good night, ma'am. Good night. There's a doggone shame. She's a fine woman. Yeah. It's just going to break her heart. I don't like this any better than you do, Chester. Yeah, but it just don't make sense. Why, Marvin Gross is as likable a young fellow you'd ever meet. Quiet, pleasant, spoken. Ah, you never know. Uh, wait outside here, will you? I don't want to talk to him alone. All right, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, the bank's closed. Oh, Michael Dillon. Evening, Marvin. You uh, working late again? It's sort of getting to be a habit. Mom just brought my supper. Like some coffee, Marshal? No, thanks. I don't really mind working late now and then. The other teller's married and got a family, and I got nothing to do with myself evenings anyhow. You, uh, you won't mind if I go ahead and eat, Marshal? No, no, no. Go ahead, Marlon. You wouldn't figure there'd be much book work in a bank like this, a town the size of Dodge. But the doggone sure is. Well, there's a lot of business done around here. I guess it's all going to be kept straight, huh? Yeah, that's it, all right. Yeah. But it sure takes time and paperwork. Oh, by golly. Mom fixed me chicken and dumplings tonight. Sure you won't have some? No, no, thanks. Now, uh, Marvin, Mr. Bodkin was in to see me today. No? Well, I can say one thing about him. He's a fine man to work for. Well, he was explaining the system you use here with your gold reserve, how you keep the gold in the vault and issue banknotes against it. Mm. Yeah, it's a... Same system most of the banks out here use. Well, he tells me that ordinarily the goals only check once a year when the bank examiner comes through. That's right. It um, just gathers dust the rest of the time. Uh-huh. Well, yesterday, Mr. Bodkin took a notion to check it himself, Marvin. There's $20,000. What? He says that you're the only man in the bank who had any chance to take it. When... No, Marshal, there, there must be some mistake. Well, I said the same thing, but Mr. Bodkin was pretty convincing. I got a warrant here, Marvin. You're under arrest for grand larceny. No! It's all wrong, no! Don't be a fool, Marvin. I'm not going to jail! Here, give me that gun! Drop it! Drop it! Yeah. Ah. Are you all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I'm all right, Chester, but go find Doc and get him over here fast.
must be in mighty bad shape, Mr. Dillon. Doc's been in there for near half hour. Well, I guess a bank office isn't the best operating room in the world. Marshal, when he grabbed that gun out of the drawer, was he trying to shoot you or himself? I don't know, Mr. Buckin. I'm not sure that he knew. He was caught off guard, and he, well, he acted without even stopping to think. You think somebody ought to go tell his mother, Mr. Dillon? Now, Doc said to wait. He's got a tough job to do, and he figures that Miss Gross being here to just make it harder. Yeah, she's a fine woman. Waits on that boy hand and foot. It's going to be a terrible shot to her. Yeah. For her sake, I hated to bring charges against Marvin. But there just wasn't any choice. Mr. Bodkin, is there any chance at all that, uh, well, somebody else could have taken the gold out of the vault? We went over all that when I signed the warrant. Yeah, I know we did. The bullion safe is inside the vault. The other teller, Oscar Dreely, has access to the vault, but only Marvin and myself have the combination of the safe. I wish there were some other explanation, but there just isn't. I guess not. This thing is just as unbelievable to me as it is to you, Marshal. My boy's been with the bank nearly two years now. And I thought I knew him. Trusted him completely. Well, anybody would have, Mr. Botkin. Quiet fellow like him, not gambling or hanging around the saloon, or just living to home with his ma. Well, gentlemen, job is done. Oh, good. Good. How soon can I talk to him? I said the job's done. I got the bullet out. The boy's dead, though. Dead? He didn't have a chance. No. Uh, did you say anything, Doc? Not a word. He didn't even come to. Mm-hmm. All right, Chester, let's get to work. Well, it appears to me the job's over, Mr. Dillon. There's $20,000 worth of gold still missing. And even worse, somebody's got to tell his mother. Well, 
Look, Miss Cruz, I hate to do this, but we're going to have to search your house. He's bound to have hidden it somewhere. All right, Marshal, search it. Tear out the walls and dig up the floor if you want. But you won't find nothing because there's nothing to find. I know my son. I know my son. Yes, ma'am. All right, Chester, let's get at it. Nice evening for this time of year, Mr. Jones. Yeah, it sure is. It's going to be an early spring. I seen a whole parcel of metal arcs this morning out south of town. Oh, they probably watered here. Oh, sure. There's two doggone many of them, too. Uh oh. Here comes Miss Gross. Let's go across the street. You can't dodge trouble by running from it, Chester. Well, I know, but the way she feels about things. Marshal. Oh, doggone it. She's sauce. Good evening, Miss Gross. Oh, I'm glad I run into you, Marshal. I was aiming to come by your office. Oh? You found out yet who robbed the bank? Uh, no, ma'am. You found the money yet? No, not yet. Two weeks now. My son laying out there on Boot Hill. Branded criminal. But not one bit of proof to back it up. Well, I've followed up every possibility I could think of, ma'am, but uh, not every single one of them has come to nothing. But you keep trying. Sure, I will. I'll keep trying. Well, I reckon I know you would. It, it ain't you I blame, Marshal. You only done your duty. You got an honest reputation. Thank you, ma'am. But I'll never forgive Mr. Botkin, never in this life. He knowed my boy. He knowed he wasn't that kind. But he went ahead and swore to that warrant. He caused Marvin's death just like he pulled that trigger himself. Now, Miss Gross, no, that's not... No, I, I ain't going to talk about it no more. I already talked myself out and cried myself out. I'm on my way to the depot, Marshal. I was coming around to tell you goodbye. I'm leaving on the 11 o'clock train. Oh, you I'm are? going back east to my kinfolk for a while. But I'll be back in a few months. Right now, there are just too many things in this town to remind me of my boy. Yes, sir. Well, I, uh... I wish you a good trip, Miss Cross. Marshal, I want my boy's name cleared, and I'll never rest till it's done. I know that. It will be. You'll see. Well, I hope you're right. And, uh, you'll take good care of yourself, huh? Oh, I will. Goodbye, Marshal. Chester? Goodbye. Goodbye, ma'am. My, she just won't give up, will she? Now, she's his mother, Chester. And even closer than most. For up Marvin wouldn't hardly take a breath without her say so. Yeah, I know. Well, hey, uh, how'd you like to have a drink, huh? Well, I'm I <laughs> I'm buying. Come on. Well, sir, now I thank you. You know she'll feel better once she gets shut of out, don't she? Back there with her own kin. Ah, uh, sure she will. Miss Gross is a fine old lady. It's just too bad. Yeah. Well, my goodness. Quite a crowd in the little long bench tonight. Over here, Matt. Come on over here and enjoy this. And there's Doc, Mr. Bart. Can you, you want to join him, Mr. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> oh, uh, would you pardon me, please? Hello, Matt. Good to see you. Hello, Kitty. Can I get you something? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, you can. The usual, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, the same for me, Miss Kitty. Uh, we'll be over at the table there, Doc. All right, fine. I'll join you. Good. Hold up the 
chair, Matt. And Chester. Join us solid, respectable citizens for a change. Well, there's some who would agree with you, Doc. How are you, Mr. Larkin? Fine, Marshal. Now buy you a drink? Well, I got one coming, thanks. Oh, uh, I just saw Miss Gross outside. She, uh, tells me she's going back east. Well, I can't say I'm sorry to hear it. For some reason, she seems to blame me for what her son did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she, uh, just suggested that maybe you'd rob the bank yourself. You search my house, Marshal. You surely don't. No, no, of course not. She was just talking out her hurt. But she knows there's no sense to it. Well, I hope you don't put any stock in anything she says. Oh, I don't. The boy was guilty. His whole reaction going for that gun and all. Well, it surely was. She just won't accept the fact, that's all. Well, uh... A mother's relation to her son gets to be a funny kind of a thing sometimes. Especially when it's as close as that one was. Yes, I've thought time and again how odd it was that that boy had kept himself so much. Well, she never gave him a chance to get out, mix, to, to grow. She, she ran his whole life on him, 24 hours a day. Well, he must have found some time, Doc. He thought up that robbery and then carried it out. Well, that's true, but I got a theory about that, man. I think he did it to hit back at her, sort of. It was a way to rebel. Oh? Yeah, but Marvin wasn't ever one to rebel much. Not against nobody. But he finally did. Oh, where are you going, man? Wait a minute. Maybe he didn't rebel, Doc. What time have you got? Well, let me see here. It's 1038. According to my gold watching chair. 1038. Chester. Well, here, I, I got a drink order. Later, later. Come on. There she is, Mr. Dunn. Standing there with the mail sack, John. Yeah, I see her. I think like this upset me something terrible. I swear to goodness, one of these days, I'm going to turn to dry farming to make a living. Sure you are, Chester, when they figure some way to take the work out of them. Now, Miss Gross. Up? Oh, why, Marshal, it's quite a surprise. Yeah, I imagine it is. What? You know, you nearly got away with it. Another hour or so, and you'd have had it safe out of town. What are you talking about? I got to thinking about Marvin, the kind of boy he was, and how he always did what you told him to. He was a dutiful son, Marvin. Sure. And when I talked to the two men who carried your trunk here to the depot, they said they could hardly lift it. What? It's pretty heavy, I guess, with a hundred pounds of gold on the bottom of it. That's a lie. I just opened that trunk, Miss Gross. You had no right to. It was Marvin's trunk. I didn't know what was in it. Your things are packed right in with the gold, things I saw in your house the day I searched it. Miss Gross, you're under arrest, accessory to grand larceny. Arrest? That's right. That stupid young fool, getting yourself shot. He could have swore to some story that had cleared me and took all the blame himself. I tell you, he'd have been glad to do it for his old mom. He died for you, didn't he? What more do you want? and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.
This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.